This meeting is being recorded. Hi and welcome to Mark's Motivational Podcast uh, for another Authors Tuesday. Today I'm delighted to be joined by another uh, fantastic author, uh, Elizabeth Martinez, and the illustrator Miguel, um, I don't want to mess up your surname, uh, Alonzo, is that correct? That's correct. Cool. So um, so it's great to have you guys on the on the podcast today. Thanks a million for joining me. Thank, Thank you, you, Mark. Me. I'm so happy that I could reach Dublin, Ireland. All yeah, the way from, so. <laughs> <laughs> all the way yeah. from Randolph, New Jersey in the yeah. USA. Brilliant, brilliant. And and then I have all different different people from all over the world on the podcast, different authors. So it's great to give authors like yourselves and illustrators like yourself, Miguel, um, a voice, you know. So it's really, really great. Um, so we'll start off, um, Elizabeth, if you wouldn't mind telling the listeners a little bit about yourself and uh, the great book you've written um, to help children. I just think it's, it's a great idea. Yes. Well, I'm a retired police detective from the city of North New Jersey, a city out here in uh, USA. I retired with 25 years of experience. I basically worked um, mostly uh, domestic violence in my career but I did everything from patrol to investigative work. I retired about three years ago when I felt that I needed to uh, find my true passion in life, you know, Mm -hmm. and my true passion was children. So during COVID, I went back to school. I got my teacher certification and I became a teacher. I started teaching early childhood uh, development and I also started teaching bilingual and ESL children. And Believe it or not, they inspire me to write this book because I found children that were just like me, Mark. I found children that struggled with the language. I myself was an ESL student. I myself struggled speaking English and Spanish because I spoke both. But I wanted to, I wanted children to be comfortable and know that it's okay to speak a dual language and it's okay if you don't speak perfect English or you don't speak perfect Spanish. So mm. I named the book my first Spanglish book, which is a combination of English and Spanish. Word so because it. it's okay to be Spanglish, there's nothing wrong. And my point is, as long as you're authentic, if that's who you are, Spanglish, as long as you're authentic to yourself, that's all that matters. And that's why I wrote the book. And... Um, It's a very interesting book because it teaches uh, children how to uh, start little basic conversation in English and Spanish. And it also teaches kids numbers, how to count the weather. I mean, not the weather, I'm sorry, the the months, the days of the week, and how to start small little conversations in English and Spanish. And it's not only for Latino children, it's also for somebody who speaks another language who wants to learn English and wants to learn Spanish, now they can learn both. It's just encouraging children uh, to pick up a language. I think languages are beautiful. I think Mm. culture is beautiful. So I just wanted to give a little bit of me because I found children that were just like me. And basically that's why I did it. And uh, my my illustrator, uh, Miguel Alonso, he was a fantastic illustrator cartoonist and with we combined this to ourselves together and we created this book and uh the illustrations are beautiful they're all hand um hand drawn hand painted it's not clip art um and uh, we wanted to give this to every children in America and all over the world, you know, or every children that was ESL and struggled with a language or just wanted to learn a language. Wow, what a great story. That's absolutely brilliant. And, um, very well done to you. Would you have um, a, a picture of the book there so you can just show yeah, the, 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 the watches on YouTube? Now. It's called my yeah. first Spanglish book. I don't hear though. Oh, and it's really so, cool. beautifully, yeah. so beautifully illustrated. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see. Um, and the book, in the book dedication, it says, this book is dedicated to all the ESL children of the world. Love your language and learn many more. 
be all you can be, be authentic, be you. English, Spanish, Spanglish, it's all beautiful just like you. And it's basically, it tells you like your name, write your name in Spanish. Oh, I can't see, I don't know. You can see. Yeah, I can see it a bit, but yeah, yeah, I can see a point now, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, it's a little boy waking up in the morning. Yeah. And it says, uh, good morning, buenos dias. Brilliant, that is brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then it tells you, uh, today is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Hoy es lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, sábado, domingo. And it also tells you there are 12 months in a year. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And then in Spanish, hay 12 meses en un año. Enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, octubre, noviembre, diciembre. It also teaches a kid how to count in English and Spanish up to 10. Um, it tells you about colors. It says, my favorite colors are red, white, blue, pink, and yellow. Mis colores favoritos son rojo, blanco, azul, rosado, y amarillo. And uh, there's a little girl in the background here. Mm -hmm. And the skyline back there, it's actually the city that I worked and dedicated 25 years. This is the city that I grew up. Uh, it's called North New Jersey. It's uh, one of the largest city in the state of New Jersey. I, I wanted to give a piece of myself in the book because this is where I came from and this mm -hmm. is where I grew up. So I, I wanted to incorporate um, a city just like mine. And it states, I live in a big city and there are many people in a big city. And it tells you in Spanish, yo vivo en una gran ciudad. Hay mucha gente en una gran ciudad. And it's also a map of the city that I lived. It was called Brick City. It's known as Brick City because of the projects that um, it was known to have in the 60s and 70s. And they named that city Brick City. But um, this is uh, the little park I used to play in, which represents <laughs> Brick City Park. But um, it just tells you there's so much things to do in a big city. Hay tanto que hacer en una gran ciudad. Um, it tells you, uh, uh, it shows children how to start a basic conversation, such as, I like to go shopping. Me gusta ir de compras. Um, I brought some new shoes. I will wear them for school. These are everyday conversations that a small child mm -hmm. will most likely have with, mm -hmm. with their teacher or with a family member. So it's, it's just a really, really cute book. And it has this beautiful uh, illustration done by Miguel. Um, it also has multicultural um, and children with disability oh, yeah. are in the picture. Um, Brilliant. It has, um, it's, it's really, really a nice book oh, and it great. encourages children to mm -hmm. pick up that language and that child that has problems speaking English hey there's nothing wrong with that it's okay to mm. speak with an accent I'm still speaking with an accent <laughs> my English is not perfect my Spanish is not perfect but I'm authentic to myself and that's all mm -hmm. that matters as long as I believe in myself Anybody could conquer anything they want in the world. What a brilliant message. And what a brilliant message the book book gives, like, you know, because and the, the, the illustrations are um, absolutely excellent as well, Miguel, really, really good. And I just love the way, because um, languages um, sometimes can be taught in schools and they go, they kind of, um, too much emphasis on grammar and all this kind of stuff. And for young kids, like what you've done there is a fun way of learning. The, the language um so like i just think that that's really great and um by by doing your new job did that kind of inspire you to um to, to write this book 
Um, I did because I started teaching a bilingual class and I found when I saw the, these children, it was like a reflection of me. I saw mm. their struggles. I saw me in these children that mm -hmm. I got inspired and I said, I have to let these children know that it's okay. It's okay, mm. okay to be Spanglish because they didn't believe me. They, they felt a little, I would say, or like a, a little bashful when it came for them to speak English because well, I don't know how to speak English because I speak English with an accent. But I told them that's okay. Mm -hmm. Most of my bilingual children came from other countries. So I gave myself an example. I'm like, listen, I'm born in the United States, born and raised in North New Jersey, and English was my second language because my mom only spoke to me in Spanish. So I didn't learn English till I was about four years old. That's why to me, early childhood is so important because mm -hmm. that's where you get your basic everything from. And mm -hmm. I learned English in preschool. So it didn't matter where I came from. English was my second language. English is still my second language. I think I speak better Spanish than English. Mm -hmm. But however, that didn't stop me from uh, achieving things that I wanted in life. Um, right. And I wanted to let them know that, that it doesn't matter. As long as you're authentic to yourself. I believe in authenticity. And mm -hmm. it's beautiful to show culture. It's beautiful to have an accent. And it doesn't matter what anybody mm -hmm. thinks. Exactly. That's what I, yeah. the reason why I wrote the book. To give back yeah. to them. To let them know, just be you. Just be mm -hmm. you. An accent is not going to stop you from being a successful in life. You know, in the perfect world, I would love to speak perfect English, perfect Spanish, but sometimes you can't achieve that. Sometimes that's not you. So as long as you are true to yourself, that's all that matters. You will be successful anyway. And that's basically the, the whole purpose of the book is just letting them know, be authentic, be you, you're beautiful, uh, you're not any less than anybody else because you if anything it's even better to speak multiple language i wish i would have spoke multiple languages but it's not even to learn i might just learn start learning how to speak more languages yeah. but uh, yeah so yeah that's great no thanks very much for it for for it's for it's a real treat for all the listeners and um especially i've got young kids myself so I'll be definitely getting a copy. You've got a customer straight away here. <laughs> and then um, where, where can so people, much. where can people, where can people buy, you know, problem, where, where can people um, buy the book, Elizabeth, where can people purchase it? My book is available on Amazon. My book is also available in Barnes and Noble. My book is mm -hmm. also available in ebook for Nook and Kindle. Great stuff. Great stuff. Yeah, if you want to just share uh, the link to it and I can put on the show notes for everybody, everybody to find as well, uh, that would be great. Okay, Miguel, could you put the link? I'm, I'm not like a computer savvy person, Miguel. Yeah, no is. problem. Put no the problem. link for the... Okay. For the... <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, no, later on after the show, you can just email it to me. That, that'd be fine. Okay. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so yourself, Miguel, as well... Um, have you have you always illustrated yourself? Um, um, where did the journey be, journey begin for yourself? Um, I started in uh, Kubert School. It was a graphic design and cartooning school a long time ago, and I'm, ever since then I've done uh, freelance work. Um, but this is my first delve into major publishing a book like this. Uh, when Elizabeth came to me, she, um, you know, had this great idea, and I thought, wow, this is great. This is a uh, a way mm -hmm. we can start a series of books, you know. And uh, yeah. yeah, I was trained by Joe Kubert. He was a, a, a comic book artist, legendary. He passed away, but he was from the 50s. Oh, yeah. And he actually, I actually worked with him. Uh, he taught me a lot of stuff. So I was looking forward to uh, doing some more work uh, with Elizabeth mm -hmm. or, or publish some more stuff. With this. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. And do you do this um, as a full-time job yourself, Miguel? Is this like your your um, full-time job yourself? Um, this is a, this is a part-time, part-time thing. Okay. Freelance yeah. things. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it being more full time and getting more projects yeah. done. Mm. And uh, well, well, again, more, look, I you can share. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> No, just saying you can you can share like your your details as well if for anybody that's looking for uh, such great work that you've done on um on on Elizabeth's book there like you know it's it's really really cool. Um, I do have an art page. It's um it's M I G H Z Arts mm -hmm. at okay. face it's in Facebook. It's a Facebook page. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. And uh, uh, my wife also had uh, she was she took a little pa uh, part in this as well, <laughs> helping us uh, edit it together. She's right here. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's my sister. She's my editor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she was my editor. Well, yeah. as you as you said, um, he touched base on it's not about grammar, and that's exactly right. The you know, the written rule doesn't always apply and doesn't always matter. It's more of the clarity of the communication. So mm -hmm. myself as a nurse with a background with neonates and pediatrics, um, you know, we read to children from day one, even before that, when they're still in the mom's belly, because, you know, oh, children learn language years before they can speak it. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's yeah. who we are. It's part of who we were growing up. And uh, so this book ins was inspired by Elizabeth's own journey with ESL and being in between languages. Uh, I learned lang English language um, at a younger age than her, but, I, I'm still Spanglish. I mix up Spanish words with English words. I mash it all together. And, you know, mm -hmm. but people can communicate this way. You know, before yeah, the, there yeah. was written language, there was communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point because, <laughs> because, because like there's no such thing as perfect English or perfect any language, you know? Everybody like have, even like we're in Ireland, like we speak a different type of <laughs> uh, dialect than somebody in the in the uk or america so like it, it, it so like you know what you've what you've done there is is, is really bringing it to light you know that you know it's not important not, not that important like don't don't get let it restrict you so that, that's really really good and i love your accent mark oh, i love you. that Irish <laughs> accent, okay and it's all about communication that's all it's about because some people say tomatoes some people people say tomatoes and some people yeah. just say tomate but the point is you understand what i'm talking about <laughs> exactly, that's all yeah. that matters it's the communication yeah. potato potato mm -hmm. papa you would know that i'm talking about a potato so yeah that that's basically my message um mm -hmm. with the children um there's no such thing as perfection or a perfect anything mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. be you you just exactly. be you don't try to be anybody else you know i felt comfortable being spanglish all my life i have to be authentic to myself that's who i mm -hmm. am and i'm yeah. proud of it i'm very proud and again i'm not promoting children to be spanglish but mm. if that's who you are it's perfect great stuff great well said yeah and what's next for you guys are you working on a, a sequel to this this book well i'm currently working on, on another children's book it's called ricky mars and okay. it's it's going to be a fantastic book it's more uh not early childhood it's going to be more for a little older kid and again it's a cool. inspirational book to believe in your mm -hmm. dreams um mm -hmm. be again authentic and, um, and you will achieve uh, everything in life. And this kid, uh, Ricky Mars, he's gonna go through trials and uh, uh, of life. He's gonna have failures. Like he's gonna try to play baseball, but he's gonna fail. He's not good at it. He's gonna try to play the piano. He's not good at it. He's gonna be good in certain things and he's not gonna be good in a lot of stuff, but that's part of life. You can't be good in everything and he's mm. going to find himself through through life and um so i'm more currently working on it um me and miguel are working on that sounds book. great guys <laughs> sounds absolutely <Yeah>. great <laughs> but it's an inspirational book to uh just believe you know just believe mm. in yourself and and you know and 
stay true for you. Don't think things are impossible. And, and again, the name Ricky Mars is because he, 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 his kid dreamed to be the first man to go to Mars. So his mother is going to nickname him Ricky Mars. That's why he get the name Ricky Mars, you know? <laughs> but then, <laughs> so the point is, Ricky is going to take it to Mars one day. He's going to be the first person who makes it to Mars. So, I'm, I'm, you know, by next year, the book should be out, hopefully. Um, so I'm working on that now. Great stuff. The best of luck with it. Sounds brilliant. Um, Thank and you. Can I just ask this as well? Um, no problem, Elizabeth. Um, like, the, do you have a kind of a strategy you use with your writing? Um, like, what I mean by that is, like, do you kind of write a certain amount of words a day, or what way do you do it yourself, um, Elizabeth? Well, I I take a little bit of life experiences, and I take a little bit of imagination, mm. and I put it together. I I write a little bit every day. I think something new every day. Gordon, you know, yeah. I, I have new ideas every day. Every day I see something. Hey, you know what? I, I should make a book about about that. Uh, I'm gonna write about uh, something that happened. You know, like Ricky Mars is kind of. I have two boys. They're based on my children uh, growing yeah. up and their trials and uh, that they went through. And you know. It did, but it didn't stop. It doesn't didn't stop my son from being uh, successful in life. I have a son who's a New Jersey State Trooper, um, Gordon, who's also, yeah. who's also a police uh, officer, and uh, my other son is in college, and both successful boys. And nothing, uh, you know. Sometimes you're not going to be good at math, but you're going to be great in science. And exactly. Basically, that's what the book is about. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't feel any less. You're, you're still going to be successful. It's about yeah. strengths and weaknesses and, you know, and things that yeah. uh, a child growing up experience. But actually, the children don't know when you're growing up. You, you realize when you get older, you see, you're like, oh, wow, you know, I wasn't the only one that wasn't good in math. You know, I wasn't the only mm -hmm. one that was good in science. But again, I was still successful. And they shouldn't feel any type of way. And basically, I want to put that book out there for them too. Great stuff. That's brilliant. Thanks, Elizabeth. That's brilliant. And um, can I just yeah. ask you because it's a motivational podcast? <laughs> like, what kind of um, even for the two of you there? Like, what kind of keeps you motivated and what you do? Like, um, Elizabeth as a as a writer, and yourself, Miguel, uh, as a um, illustrator, a great illustrator like yourself as well. Do you want to go? Uh, yeah, what keeps you motivated? Like, like what I mean by that, you know, the way sometimes um, you may be doing a writing something and you hit a metaphorical wall. Let's say, like you know, you can get a, get a blockage. How, how do you how do you kind of get yourself motivated to to to, to get out of that? If that makes sense. Um, well, for me, I I see this life as a journey. Like I mm. said, you know, I had this uh, journey as a police officer. Now mm. I feel like that's that's what I did. It's not who mm -hmm. I am. And every time yeah, what motivates so. me is like, I, I found myself, this is who I am. I have the time to do everything that I wanted to do in life. I can't let time go by. Time is so valuable to me. And mm -hmm. I've been writing for a long time. Nobody knew about it because I always kept it like a secret. I'm also a poet. I have a published poem that was out in 1998. It's, an, it's in, actually is in an, in an anthology book. Um, it was called uh, First Millennial Poetry. It's an anthology book that was out in 1998. I had my first poem published. I always mm -hmm. wrote poetry. I always wrote. I just never had the time to, because of my job, to give mm -hmm. myself the full dedication. And I get, yeah. I, like you said, I wasn't. Mo it didn't motivate me because I was tired. So. Every time that I think, wow, 25 years of a career as a police officer went by, I can't let time go by. I have no. to do the things that I want to do, the things that make me happy. And work, working with children makes me happy. Writing a book makes me happy. So I can't let that go. I have to, every time I catch myself saying, oh, you know, I pick myself back up and say, hey, this is who I am. I finally found my authentic self, you know, 
I'm going to do my next book. Because I don't do this for a living and I don't do this. People don't think that children's book writer, we don't make a lot of money. It's not about the money. I write mm -hmm. this about my soul. This is for my spirit. This is to mm -hmm. touch children. I don't do this for a living. I do this strictly for my, to give back. To, right. For a child to pick up this book and say, hey, she was just like me. She understands me. And basically that's why I do it. Oh, well done. That's great, yeah. <laughs> absolutely brilliant, yeah. Brilliant, no, well done to you. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, and besides your again. project, um, I'm working on something myself uh, on my own. It's more of a, of a graphic novel type, more for adults. But um, mm -hmm. what motivates me is to, you know, world events and political turmoil and stuff so that I feel like there's a message uh, for, for the people to rise up against, uh, you know, the, uh, you know um, more authoritarian rules, things like that that's going on in the world. Um, mm -hmm. War, speaking out against war, speaking out against things like that, uh, speaking for the people. Um, I feel motivated by that. I feel like uh, art is a great way to uh, mm -hmm. to get the message across. You know, um, yeah. That's that's what I, that that's the type of stuff that motivates me, and um, also for children too, to uh, mm -hmm. to help them learn and help them teach things. You speak to them in a different level, of course, than than adults, but um, just getting a message across and. Uh, that's the, that's the kind of stuff that keeps me drawing, keeps me uh, illustrating, and wanting to do books and and stories. So. Yeah, you guys make a great team. With you know, with, <laughs> like it's just it gels really well. Like you know, and how, how did you guys get together with the um, you know, you've been an illustrator and um, Elizabeth, you've been being the writer. How, how did that? Did it just kind of happen or? Not when uh, when I started teaching bilingual children. I mm -hmm. approached them. I said, I know that your work is phenomenal. I love your artwork. How do you feel about um, helping me illustrate this book? I have this idea. I want to put out this uh, dual language book for little children. Um, how would you feel about being the illustrator? And he said he would love to. And that's how he made it happen. That's great. That's a great good point as well that you made there, like um, Elizabeth. Like, don't be afraid to ask. Never be afraid to ask. You know, because look, look what you guys did together now. Like, that's that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, great stuff. No, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting it for because I've got a four year old. So I've, got a, I've, I've got a five year old myself, and um, he, he, it'd be great to to learn him Spanish. It's a, it's great to have languages. I agree with you. Like. It can if it, like I'm sorry we we only, I only know English, but like I learn Irish like in school, the way they taught Irish in school, um, was it compulsory like but um the way they taught it wasn't very well when I went to school, like they didn't teach it too good like they um it was all grammar and it was all kind of hammered into you to get me so like so yeah. like nobody liked it. it was like oh no I don't want to learn Irish no <laughs> but then when you leave school then and you, you you kind of think god I'd like to learn it then I, and you know now as an adult you like I'm starting to learn it which is great to know your own language it's it's brilliant you know well you can learn with my first Spanglish book you can learn <laughs> yeah. how to count you can learn it the months the weeks yeah. Quite and uh, how to start a <laughs> conversation <laughs> because it's so important isn't it for kids to, to just to have conversations it's the most important thing for a language you know to commute commu what's the word for it converse isn't it Com to converse um between them is so important yes yes absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. you go both um, ways oh. Spanish to English and English to Spanish yeah. you know okay yeah no so yeah it's, it's it's great we're just making a point there about um you know, in, in schools, like when, the Irish language, um, when we were growing up in school, we, um, like, it was kind of, kind of drilled into you and that you're a maid learner. So a lot of, a lot of children, my friends were like, no, I don't want to learn it. But then when you get older, you kind of get more interested in, in, in the subject, you know? Yes. Yes, absolutely. 
I wish I would have learned many more languages, you know, or I would have picked up some more languages. Um, yeah. But um, I could just now uh, give that advice to children, you know, mm. to not make the same mistake yeah. I did, you know, learn as many languages as you can. Languages are beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Especially and with culture, young. Sorry. Sorry. And culture, culture. Cultural diversity is so important. It's cultures are so beautiful. I think people just got to take their time and get to know each other's culture. So you can see how beautiful culture is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, no, great point. Like, cause like you said earlier on, um, Elizabeth, like when you're younger, when you're a kid, they're like sponges. So it's the mm -hmm. best time to learn for them to learn languages, isn't it? Isn't it? Like, cause you know, even my five-year-old, like I speak Irish to him in the house just for a bit of fun, you know, <laughs> and uh, they, they, they're very receptive, you know, they, they pick it up really quickly. Yes, they do. That's why you you have to learn at an early age. That's why to me, early childhood is so important. Like preschool is so important because that's where you develop your cognitive skills, your social skills. Mm -hmm. it, that's where it all starts. It all starts in, in preschool. It broadens your opportunities when you're looking for work later in life, other careers, you know, speak different languages and communicate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, can you hear me? I don't know what's happening there. Can you still hear me? No, no, I thought it was up there losing you there. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and you do some movie movie work as well, Miguel. Do you do, do some movie work as well? Movie work? Is like did I say, maybe I read it wrong? Um, maybe <laughs> like uh, I, I, like cartoon work or sorry, cartoons is it? Oh, it was, it was just a um comic book stuff. Oh, and, comic uh, book, sorry, cartoon, cartoonist work. Huh? Oh yeah, yeah, very good, very yeah, good. yeah. It's, 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 that falls under the illustration uh work that I was doing. Oh um, yeah, great stuff. But, yeah, yeah. Um, it's freelance stuff, but this is my first uh, dive into published uh, work. So right, yeah. Um, right. I'm hoping it, it expands even more. Uh, uh, movies would be great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because because <laughs> look, look, like I just by listening to what you're saying there, um, you know what you've done there. That, that I think there'll be um an appetite for cartoons. Kind of to make, have you ever thought of that yourself, Elizabeth? Like to kind of make it into a, a kind of a cartoon oh, animation. format, like a, animation. That's a word, yeah. Uh, I would love to. I just never thought about it, but whatever comes out of it, it's it's yeah. great. It would be great. Yeah, great. So, cause, no, because it, it would make sense, point it, wouldn't it? Because, you know, the message is, is so good, you know? Thank you. Thank that you. Would, yeah. that, would, that would be great to do that next. Mm -hmm. Animated shorts, uh, YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, definitely, definitely. But I really appreciate you coming on. It's been amazing Thank talking you so to you much. about your book. Can I just ask you, Elizabeth, just one or two questions I always, always ask the guests that when they yeah. come on, if that's okay, it's just your favorites, you know? <laughs> so I might ask them, you both individually, like, you know, what would your, your favorite music to listen to yourself, Elizabeth? My favorite music? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I'm from the 80s. Uh, I really actually, <laughs> I liked... Uh... I was like a punk rocker, believe it or not, growing up. Really? Yeah. You know, I liked, uh, I was called new wave music back in the day. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm international. So I don't have favorite music because I'm so cultural. I like European mm -hmm. music. I like American right. music, Spanish mm -hmm. music, African music. I like every culture. So mm -hmm. I... I'm international. Even when they say, oh, Liz, uh, what nationality you are? I'm like, you know, besides being Latina, I am international because I love international things. I love international music. I love international foods. Everything has to be cultural with me. So, yeah, but, oh, um, that's, it's, a, it's a great way to be. <laughs> Sorry. I love all music. I love every music but growing up i was more punk and i was more uh new wave i was more into that european uh music but i love every music i don't have a style i don't have a style i'm everything <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a great way. way to be great way to be yourself miguel <laughs> sorry 
I have to agree. I'm the same way. I have a broad, uh, uh, you know, taste in music, uh, but I, I love uh, all the 60s and 70s. I'm a big Pink Floyd fan. Uh, I'm a boss, big Radiohead yeah. fan. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I like all the trippy rock stuff. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Have and, you ever ever went to see them in concert? Have you? Um, uh, well, uh, Pink Floyd, no, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. Uh, Radiohead, yeah. yes. I'd say that would go with live, yeah. I'd say that was good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, I did see Roger Waters, uh, The Wall, when he came to New York. Oh, brilliant. Oh, class, uh, yeah. That was pretty awesome. He's doing a concert right now. And oh, okay. I didn't yeah. get to see him. <laughs> yeah, and I love Billy Idol. I wish Billy Idol. Billy Idol. Oh, Billy yeah. Idol. Brilliant, yeah. It's I great love... that we have concerts. It's great that we can go to concerts again, isn't it? Like after yeah. all the last yeah. few years. Yeah. yeah, that was a uh, yeah, big bump in the road there. <laughs> big time, yeah. yeah. And and as well as that, do you have favorite books? What would your favorite kind of books to read um, or authors? Oh, my favorite book. I love biographies. Mm. I just finished this book. It's, uh, it's actually, she's the first Hispanic Supreme Court Justice that's... Um, her name is Sonia Sotomayor. She's the first Puerto Rican uh, judge, Supreme Court judge in the United States. And I loved her book. You never know. You know why I love biographies? Because you never know how somebody is just like you until you read their book. I mm -hmm. thought this woman was my relative. I read wow. her book and I had so much in common with her. Even the things that she says about her family, describing things that she went through in life, I totally could relate to her. Um, except that I didn't go to Princeton and she was super smart, but uh, <laughs> she she was very inspiring to me. Um, I loved the book. I loved her book. I actually enjoy biographies because I love knowing about what somebody went through in their life or growing up and their goals and how they made it. So that was my last book that I that I I I read. Um, it was very actually I have it right here. It's um, I love this book. This is her book. It's her bio. Good, yeah. It was amazing. Her bio is amazing, and she's so inspirational to me. And you know she also writes children's books. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's, yeah. She's the first Hispanic. Supreme Court Justice uh, Judge Female. Um, so I was so inspired by her. And it's crazy because she was a prosecutor before she became a judge. And all she wanted to be was a NYPD cop. But she was never, she was, ne she was not able to become a cop because she had juvenile diabetes all her life. She was a diabetic. So she was not healthy to become a police officer. But her dream was to become a police officer. Okay. So, you know, who knew mm -hmm. until I read this book it, and she went through a lot of, you know, many things, you know, like in Hispanic culture that we go through, she went through and I, I had such a connection to her. I felt like she was even a family member because wow. we had so much in common. You'll be surprised when you read biographies, uh, how much in common you have with that person. That's great. Isn't it like, yeah, well, because, um, like it's, it's, you never know until you read it because it, they're so like, you know, when you're reading a book like that, it's hard to pull it down, isn't it? <laughs> yes. I think I finished yeah. that book, I think in three days and it's a pretty big book. Like oh, three God, or four days, quick. less than a, I, I, like four days, like less than a week, I would read. I was so into that book and mm -hmm. she went through so much and people, you know, you see sometimes, uh, you know, stars and celebrities, but you don't know what that person went through in life or you know their yeah, yeah, health exactly. issues i mean she had this woman had diabetes all her life as a child and she battled with it but again it didn't stop her from being a yeah. successful person she was an attorney a prosecutor and now she's a supreme court justice so and you know i'm super inspired by her mm -hmm. she yeah, had a lot of challenges in her life you know, if you read her book, she she was poor. She grew up like in an urban city, just like I did. But however, she made it to Princeton University. That's an Ivy League school. 
and she graduated with high honors and she's a successful woman today. Totally inspired by her in her book. Sounds great. Like who wouldn't be inspired by that? Like so uh Croat courageous. That's the word. There we go. <laughs> courageous, <laughs> courageous, that's the word, courageous. Like the, you know, yes. the, you know, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Now, thanks for sharing. I must have a look for that book myself. Like that, that, oh, that sounds thank great. You. Yeah. And and yourself, Miguel, do you have a favorite uh, author or a favorite book to read? Uh, I've been reading some uh, someone named Michael Parenti. Uh, he's a um, a big uh, critic of um, U.S. history, and you know, there's a book called Inventing Realities, which um, I'm reading. It's a it's a, it's a criticism of the media and how it, uh, they work together to uh, help the corporate um, profits of work for politicians instead of really informing people. And uh, you know, he does a lot of criticism of U.S. history and things like that that we should know about. And um, and then of course there's the comic book world, uh, yeah. the graphic novels like Sandman and Neil Gaiman. He's mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's pretty popular. Uh, oh, he's yeah. did American Gods and and other things like that. So those are those also inspires me to draw as well. I see other people mm -hmm. creating these books that I want want to create one day. <laughs> that sounds great because like I love the force and you said there because it, it highlights what's going on in the world really you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they're two great suggestions. That's why I love about doing these podcasts. You get some great suggestions of, of books, you know. So it's, it's great. Yeah, you know? I, I forgot to bring my pen today and write them down. You know? <laughs> Add to the reading. But, uh, we'll send yeah. it to you. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Yeah, and and maybe one or two more questions. That's okay. Your your favorite movies? Do you have any favorite movies to, uh, to watch? Oh boy. Favorite um, movie? I gotta think about this one. Yeah, movies. Yeah, <laughs> I do have a few, but I just can't think about them right now. Um, I'm very now. corny when it comes <laughs> Sorry to for like my Sorry my for favorite movie. Spot. My favorite movie of all, of of all time. You're not gonna believe it. It's a uh, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah with John Travolta don't ask me why it's a great soundtrack <laughs> but I can see exactly I think that's what it is you know yeah. I think that don't, it's corny I know I'm like telling oh you know that's one oh. of my favorite movies right yeah so I guess because of the soundtrack I guess every time I hear the Bee Gees it brings me back to that movie and mm. I love the Bee Gees so yeah great. yeah but I movies I can't really think. I do have a lot, but I just can't think about it right now. Oh yeah, no, that's a good movie. I like that movie as well. It's great because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brilliant. And, and yourself, Miguel? Mm -hmm. I don't know, off the top of my head, there's so many movies now. I'm, I'm like, um, I love anything from Kubrick. I love The Shining, which was uh, Stephen mm -hmm. King. Oh, but yeah, that that's a movie I always go back to all the time. It's just mesmerizing. And, the visuals on that is one of my favorite, and uh, the Evil Dead franchise is funny too. Evil Dead too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything horror comedy that mix together is really great. Shaun of the Dead. You ever mm -hmm. see that one? Oh, uh, that's good. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Uh, um, do you know your man Robin Williams? He's a great actor. You, see, you know, I just thought of a film there you've seen before. Um, Patch Adams. Have you seen that? I think I saw that a long time ago. Oh, it's great because you know he, he like he worked and he went to a pediatric a, a children's hospital and he 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 put the yeah. red nose on and all made them all laugh. I just thought it was a real feel good movie. There's great um great messages in that film. You know, it's really really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one a my, great one actor. of my favorites. Yeah, absolutely, he's brilliant. He was yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. No, but but listen, I really appreciate you coming on tonight. It was it was great talking to you and um. I wish you all the success going forward with your with your great book it's, and 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 your books to to come as well. It, it's been been amazing. Um, I'm I'm so glad I have you on to to introduce me to that book. Thank, thank you. So you. Much. Thank you for having us. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Thanks a million for tuning in to today's podcast, Mark's Motivational Podcast, another author's Tuesday, with um, yeah. So with myself, Mark Lestrange, and we had uh, we're. Delighted to be joined by Miguel, um, sorry, Miguel, 
Alonso, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, and um, and and the, the Elizabeth Matisse. Uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah. Thanks for uh, 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 thanks very much for coming on. I really appreciate it, thank Elizabeth. You so and, much, and all the, and thank thanks for putting a brilliant book out into the world like that. It's it's absolutely thank brilliant, you. Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so <laughs> thanks so much. And all the best. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Mark here. Thank you for watching another episode of my Authors Tuesday podcast. I recently published a book of children's stories called The Adventures of Larry Lampos and Friends. The book began life as bedtime stories I wrote for my own children. If you'd like to purchase my book, follow the link in the description box below. By buying my book, you are also supporting my podcast series for authors, which is giving a voice to writers in Ireland and across the world.